Let's talk about capturing beautiful flower photos with your iPhone. One of the best things about it is that it's super accessible. You don't have to travel to exotic places. If you have any flowers in your backyard or perhaps in your local city park, or if someone gives you flowers as a gift, all of those are great opportunities to practice flower photography. And flowers are really beautiful. They make for some incredible photos if you capture them correctly. However, there are also some common mistakes that people make when they're taking photos of flowers. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my favorite tricks for capturing the best possible flower photos and I'll also share with you some pitfalls to avoid to make sure you get the best images possible. Now, before I open my camera app and start shooting, let's talk about the conditions we have today. You'll see that it's a sunny day. We have direct sunlight, which casts harsh shadows and harsh bright spots pretty much everywhere. And that is not a great day for flower photography. If you can do this on a cloudy day, you're going to get better results and it will be easier for you to work with light. However, we do have a sunny day and I still want to take some photos. So I'll have to be extra careful about making sure that this direct sunlight does not ruin my photos. Now we're recording this video in the garden of my apartment building and I'm really lucky to have all these beautiful flowers around me. So that gives me quite a few opportunities to do flower photography. But when I first get out my iPhone in a location such as this one, the first instinct will be to just try to capture it all. We have so many flowers, so why limit yourselves, right? But let me show you what happens if I try to frame up some of them. For example, here we have this really beautiful bunch of flowers and it looks stunning to the human eye. But nothing really stands out there. There's a lot of clutter and it just doesn't look good. So what's going on here? The flowers are so beautiful, right? Well, remember simplicity. The more you can simplify your photos, the more you can find your subject and isolate it from everything else, the better those photos are going to look. And that's definitely true for flower photography. So instead of trying to get all of those flowers or many of those flowers in the same shot, I need to find just one flower and I need to try to isolate that flower from the background so that everything else kind of disappears and all I have left is that one beautiful flower to admire. I think I found my flower and it's this little thing right here. The reason I like this particular flower is because it stands on its own. Close to it, I don't have any other flower. All I have is some more green leaves. And I think because of that, I should be able to create a really nice shot where I have only the orange flower against green leaves. That way the flower should really stand out. Now, I do have a bit of a problem though. You will see that the flower is in the sun right now. That's not gonna look so good. You can see that some parts of the flower are very bright, almost completely white. So I don't want the flower to be in the sun. What I can try to do is just slightly reposition my body like this. And now I am actually covering the flower. So you'll see that the flower is in the shadow. Another thing I can do is to simply get closer. So I'm gonna to switch to my 2X, my telephoto lens. And you'll see the two things happen. I'm closer, but I'm also changing the compression of the shot. By switching to my 2X, essentially I'm including a lot less of that background. And the less of that background I have in the frame, the better it's going to be because I want the simplest background possible. So right now I want to be sure that that flower is indeed in the shadow. I don't want any bright spots in the image. And I need to carefully frame the shot so that the flower is centered in the frame. Once I'm happy with my framing, I'll go ahead and press the shutter. So this image is already much better than the image we started with. That's because I took a single flower and I isolated it against a simple background. However, I think I can find a better flower. Those roses over there, they might have some even better photo opportunities. Now you already saw how difficult it was to try to make a shadow myself. Now fortunately for me, right over my shoulder there are these giant trees and they are actually covering a big part of the garden. It's not going to last for a long time. 
If I have the shade here now, maybe in half an hour or so, the spot might already be in the sun. But the good news is that I've found this really beautiful rose here that I'd like to take photos of. And you'll see that this rose is right at the perfect stage of development. It has already opened wide enough, but all the petals are still fresh. It's still beautiful, but there's a lot of texture. There's a lot to see because there's so many of these petals. So I'm really happy with this rose and I'm gonna try to take a photo. Now I'm already in my 2X, my telephoto lens, so I'm already closer, but you'll notice that I have a bit of a problem. I'm trying to isolate the rose so that I have this beautiful red rose against the green background, but I can't really do this because I have all these other little roses surrounding this main flower. Now, one thing I could try is getting even closer. So let me show you. You'll see that as I'm starting to get closer and closer with my iPhone, I'm starting to take things out of context. You'll see that now I no longer have anything around that rose. I just have those beautiful petals. So they're making these circles around this point in the center and that looks really, really good. However, there is a limit to how close I can get. At some point, as I start to get closer and closer, you'll see that everything kind of goes out of focus. If I want to work around that, if I want to get even closer, I would need to use a macro lens, but that's a topic for another video. For now, I just have to be careful that I'm not so close that the iPhone can no longer focus. So I'm gonna to have to move back just a little bit. And now when it looks like everything is in good focus, I wanna make sure I really capture a sharp image. Because I'm so close to the flower, it's actually really difficult, not only for the iPhone to focus, but also for me to get a correct focus. What I'm gonna do here is tap and hold my finger until I see AEAF lock. And now I've locked my focus on the flower but still, I don't really know which part of the flower is in focus because the flower is three-dimensional. Some parts of those petals are much closer to me than others. And because of that, even though I locked focus on the flower, I don't know exactly where the focus is. Now, another problem I'm facing is those green corners. I want to create the kind of image where all I see is this beautiful flower. So I want to take this completely out of context where we just see those beautiful petals and nothing else. But the problem is that if I get too close, the image goes out of focus. As I start to go back, those green corners start to come in. Now, I could crop them out later. That would be one solution. But if you really think about this composition, that rose is really symmetrical. It's almost like a circle. Since I'm taking it out of context, and since I'm just showing that symmetry, that circular pattern of the rose, I think a square composition could work really well here. So, I'm going to open the hidden menu by tapping on that arrow on the right. And from here, where it says four by three, I'm gonna switch over to a square aspect ratio. Now you'll see that I'm immediately taking a square image. And it's actually easier for me to form the kind of composition I'm looking for. I wanna make sure that the center of the rose is in the center of the frame. And then I get a really nice, really symmetrical view. Now I'm happy with the square composition, but I still have that focus problem. So what can I do? Now, you'll notice that I've locked the focus. So the focal distance of my lens is now fixed. But what I can change is how far I am from the rose. So if I get just a tiny bit closer and just a tiny bit further away, you'll pretty much see the focus change, right? And I don't really know for sure what's the correct distance. It's also a little bit difficult to see it, but I wanna be sure that I get the sharpest image possible. I don't wanna take any chances. To get that image, I'm going to shoot with a burst mode. And while I shoot using the burst mode, I can continuously move closer and further away, closer and further away. And during all this time, I'm also trying to keep the rose centered. As I'm making these tiny little movements, as I'm getting a little bit closer and a little bit further away, the distance at which everything will be in focus remains fixed. So this essentially gives me a lot of options. So I'm kind of giving myself insurance policy. I'm capturing so many images that I know that at least one of them will have focus exactly right. So let's take a look at the burst we just captured. I'm going to start by tapping select at the top. And now I get to choose my favorites. As I do this, I'll start by just scrolling through all the images to see what I have available. As I'm doing this, my goal is to find the image that is the sharpest. I think these ones are quite good, so I'm gonna select this image. It looks like it's really sharp. And just to be sure, I'll select this one as well, as well as this one. So I'm again, selecting more than I need, just to be sure, because I'm gonna discard a lot of these photos. 
Now, as we start going further away from the rose, it's no longer as sharp, so I don't quite like that. And as we're coming back in, it's starting to look good again. So I'll select this photo, maybe also this one. All right, I'll pick this one as well. I think here, these ones aren't as sharp. And maybe I'll also pick this image just to be sure. So I've selected quite a number of photos. So I'm gonna go ahead and press done and I'll choose to only keep my favorites. All right, let's take a closer look at one of these photos. You'll see that I have this beautiful, perfect symmetrical composition that fits in nicely in a square. So I'm happy with that. You'll also see that the image is perfectly sharp so I can see those rose petals and how they're separated from each other very clearly. And I'm just really happy with this image in general. It's such a beautiful shot of such an incredible flower. Now, in just a matter of minutes, we got really special photos right here in this little garden of my apartment building. Even though the light wasn't perfect on a sunny day like this, we were able to work with the shade, first by using my own body as the source of shade, which partially worked, and then using those trees as the source of shade, I was actually able to spend some more time with these roses and that worked out really, really good. So to recap, as you're taking photos of flowers, don't just take a photo of all the flowers. As tempting as that is, it generally doesn't look good and it creates a messy composition. So try to isolate just one flower and make sure you separate it from the background and from the surroundings as much as you can. So if your flower has a bright color, Ideally, nothing else in that image should be bright. A lot of times, going for a square composition works better, and to get the sharpest shots possible, I recommend that you lock the focus on the flower and then capture a lot of photos using burst mode as you gently move your iPhone closer and further away from the flower. If you follow this technique, you're guaranteed to get the sharpest, most incredible iPhone photos of flowers possible. This video was a free preview of my iPhone Photo Academy online course. In this course, you'll discover everything you need to know to take stunning photos with your iPhone. So if you'd like to take the kind of photos that will leave your friends and family speechless, please take a look at the full version of iPhone Photo Academy. You'll find a link in the description right next to this video. So click on that link right now, and I'll see you inside the full version of the course.